as much as I like the recent run, the averages, we need to acknowledge that this market has a few glaring weak spots. For example, the autos. It's become pretty clear that car sales have peaked in the U.S. However, while we've seen some awful car numbers, we're also seeing some amazing truck orders. Just yesterday, we learned that net orders for Class 8 trucks surged 81% last month. Do you know that's the biggest increase in nearly three years? Yep, despite all the hand-wringing about autos, the truth is that the truck-making industry is on fire. And that huge order number wouldn't have been a surprise yesterday if you've been following Meritor, M-T-O-R, for all you home gamers. Meritor makes truck parts, specifically drivetrain, braking, suspension systems. Here's a stock that's been screaming higher ever since the election. It's not more than 50% year-to-date. And based on the numbers Meritor reported last week, I'd say that move is more than justified. Company delivered a gigantic 18 cent earnings beat off a 46 cent basis. Isn't that incredible? Much higher than expected revenue up 9.4% year over year. Plus, management raised their full year guidance. Clearly, the truck supply business is in excellent shape. Can Meritor stock keep climbing? Let's take a closer look with Jay Craig, the president and CEO of Meritor. Find out more about how his company's doing and where it is headed. Mr. Craig, welcome to Man Money. Good to Thanks. see you, sir. Thanks for having you. Have a Great seat. Great to be here. All right, first, what is going on in the truck industry? This is the strongest I can recall. Well, Jim, it's been in a little bit of a lag for the last couple of years, right. but now the economy has been strong for a long period of time, and trucking over the long term follows the economy, and that's what we're seeing is finally that demand is just catching up. As strong as it is, your company's demand has been even stronger. What are you doing right, and is it taking share from others, or you just have more and more parts that people want? Well, I think it's uh, we're taking advantage of the market moving up, and I think it's really a matter of focus and staying nimble and just excellent execution that we've had over the last several years. And I think our whole team is very, very focused on our key priorities of our M2019 strategy. Now, I think some people are probably wondering, where did these guys come from? But you've been in Troy. You've been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. We'll be celebrating our centennial here in 2019. So we have been around a long time. And the company's done a great job of innovating and adapting with the market since then. Now, I noticed you uh, hired a new person, Sherry Lance. I thought it was very interesting because it's a, strategi a strategy officer. Now, what does that mean, trying to do some different strategies? What well, we're very satisfied with our previous three-year strategy, okay. M2016, where we nearly doubled the profit margin of the company over that three-year mm -hmm. period from the date of announcement. We're in the midst of our M2019 strategy, which calls for growing EPS by 80, 80 cents and then uh, also growing revenue by 20 percent above the markets. But what I want to see us do is just look more long term uh, and make sure we're setting ourselves up for a longer term strategy as well beyond that three year period. It looks like Europe's going well. Could that be an increasing part of your business? It is. We have a strong position in Europe, particularly with Volvo and with Aveco truck. Right. And we're doing very well there and have some new business wins. Uh, that we'll be announcing details of here in uh, not too distant future. Okay, so people know it's uh, not just trucks. It's tractors, trailers, buses, coaches, fire trucks, other specialty vehicles that you do aftermarket for, right? That's correct. In fact, we announced this quarter the new agreement with Rev Group, which is focused on the specialty markets, the fire trucks. And uh, so our new product development, we've been on a push to launch 20 new significant product programs in this M2019 strategy period, uh, and, and many of those will be applicable to our, our new customer that we've signed up, the Revger. Where are the trucks going? I, and I know that, for instance, in the Permian, they've discovered so much oil, they need trucks for uh, just to take it to the Gulf. I mean, but where's the demand coming from? Who are the buyers? Is it trucking companies? Uh, it's primarily fleets here in the U.S. Fleet. So it's a heavy fleet business in the U.S., and those fleets are, are in demand in the typical driver's housing auto, oil and gas, consumer goods, uh, Amazon, the freight forwarder, and those movements. And then when you get to overseas, very similar drivers, but the fleet is not as big an influence as the individual right. owner operator. Well, you mentioned one that is really appealing to, our, uh, to the people who watch the show. Amazon is shipping a huge amount. E-commerce is shipping a huge amount. It has to go by truck to get to you. Is that actually, uh, or is e-commerce such a spur to the economy that it could be some sort of secular growth engine for trucks? I, th I think it could be, and offsetting some of the areas that may be in decline. 
So right now, I, I heard you talk about on the lead into the show, the auto decline, mm -hmm. but there could be some increase in the e-commerce delivery Absolutely. that f backfill that demand in trucking as well. Uh, I wanted to ask this. Um, the aftermarket supply, we have terrible infrastructure in this country. Well, I listen to these railroads, they talk endlessly about, you know what, because the roads are so bad, the trucks break down, you gotta go by railroad. Are the trucks bad, are the roads bad enough that trucks do get damaged? Uh, they do, in fact. And but you'll hear the American Trucking Association uh, really lobbying very strongly for the infrastructure spending that's been promised out of the federal government because of the destruction it's making to the tractors and trailers. That's for real. All right, one last question. Here you are in Troy. I look at the stock. The stock's been one of the great performers. Do you ever get tired of hearing about Fang, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Alphabet? Because your company is doing much better than all those when it comes to the stock. Uh, you know, we, we uh, have to continue to tell our story. Again, right. we're a company with a nearly 100-year history, uh, hardcore manufacturing, but we're also looking towards the future. We have a big push on electrification right now. We think we're establishing a strong position in that marketplace as we see the trend of commercial vehicles most likely moving where light vehicles are, sure. more, more highly electrified. Uh, and we think that will start to catch some people's attention that may not have looked at it. Uh, a little time of driverless trucks, too? Autonomous vehicles. You saw For Daimler uh, run one onto the Hoover Dam about a year or so ago, an autonomous vehicle. Uh, that won't necessarily influence us as right. much directly as electrification. But that's a trend that's probably coming as well. Wow. Well, look, we gotta, we got to find these great ideas wherever we can, including Troy, Michigan, Meritor. What a stock. That's Jay Craig. He's the president and CEO of Meritor, symbol M-T-O-R. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.